Hey everybody, I got this image here from my last road trip. It needs a little editing before I can share it, so I thought I'd walk you guys through the process. It's a little underexposed and flat right now. It's because it was shot a little underexposed and with the flat color profile to retain the most data possible. So it needs a little post-processing to bring that back. I'm going to walk you guys through how I do that right now. First thing I like to do is drop down the highlights. It's going to bring back some of that clarity in the clouds. Bump up the shadows. It's going to do the same thing for those shadows in the trees and such. The image is a little washed out now after you do that. You fix that by using the contrast slider just till it looks natural again. We'll take the exposure up just a little bit and start working on some of my local adjustments. I'm going to grab the adjustment brush here, do a little dodging and burning. I'm going to start with the dodging. And I want to zoom in here to where the, some of these aspens were. When I'm doing my dodging, I make sure I got feather of 100 and auto mask on. Auto mask, as long as I keep those crosshairs and my adjustment brush on the same color and contrast pixels, it won't bleed over in the other parts of the image. To keep my show selected mask overlay on so I can see where I've already painted. And I just want to go through and hit these aspens up. I'll speed through this process here. All right, I also got some of these grasslands down here that I want to lighten up. If you happen to hit something you don't want to, you can use Control Z and it'll undo your last brush stroke. Move over to the other side. And I'm going to rush through this as well. Alright, I said brush through, but that was really just for you guys. I'm actually taking my time and painting them what I want. Just don't think you want to watch the whole process. I'm going to double click. I can see everything that I dodged. I uncheck my mask. And then I can come up here and make my adjustments and I want to go about 0.30 uh, maybe a little more let's go 0.35 just to lighten those areas up make them pop a little bit uh, now I'm going to do a little bit of burning I'm going to click done on that brush grab another one drop down menu switch to burn and now all these places, the dark trees around the aspens, the dark trees in the mountains. I'm going to hit all that with the burn tool. Still resizing my brush with the wheel on my mouse. And I'm just going to paint this stuff in just like I did before. Some of the trees that already have pretty good shadow on them, I'm going to leave alone. All right, I think I've got everything painted in that I wanted to burn. I'm going to turn off the mask overlay. That's a little too dark for me, so I'm going to back it off. Negative 0.17 looks pretty good. And I got a little more... more I want to adjust here these rock faces. They had some reds in them that really aren't coming through. Not on the peak, that was mostly the color it is, but these other faces, it's just not showing up. I want to brighten them up a little bit too. Bump up the clarity on them a hair. Resetting all my sliders on my brush. Grab a new one.
reset it to zero. And then I'm going to get to work on all these rock faces. Just going to paint them in and then I'll show you how I make my adjustments. Okay, I think I about got all my cliff edges, rock walls painted in. I'm going to unselect the mask overlay. Take up the exposure just a hair. Don't want to overdo it. About 0.35 is looking good. I'll take up my clarity to about 40. And now i got to bring that color back. I might be tempted to use the saturation slider, but a lot of times you have reflected light on your mountains from the sky, and you'll end up bringing in some unnatural colors. I'll just go a little overboard here to zoom in and show you what I mean. You're starting to get some purple hues, some blue hues. That's that reflected light from the sky. And I don't really want to bring that in, so I'm going to back that off. And I got a little trick for this. Instead of using the saturation to make it look a little redder, I'm going to use the temp slider. And then just a little touch on the tint. And that's looking pretty good right there. Zoom back out. Actually, I might have went a little overboard on that so I'm just going to select it again and I want to back that temp slider off just a little bit that's looking good now I do want to brighten up my peak here a little bit that'll be quick and easy grab a new brush take up the exposure and just something like that all right, now I'm going to get the work on this water. Shot this at F4 because I wanted the water to actually be a little blurry. But the effect didn't pull through as much as I wanted it to. I wanted it to look nice and dreamy, have a little blur to it, a little bokeh. But that didn't work out, so see what I can do here in Lightroom. I'm going to grab my gradient filter, slide it up there. I want to brighten it up a little bit. Use both the exposures and the whites, not going overboard too much on either. And then I'm going to bring the clarity slider down. Get a little blur on that water for that dreamy effect I was talking about. And I want to bring in a little bit of that color reflected from the sky, not too much. want it to look natural still. About right there. That is looking pretty good. And I got just a couple more things to go here. The sun was up here in the top left corner, shining in this way. And I kind of want to bring that effect back in, give a little color gradient to the image, make it pop a little more. So I'm going to grab another gradient filter, come in here from the top left, drag it down about halfway through the image. I want to brighten it up a little bit, not too much. About right there, and then I want to warm it up a hair. Then come in from the other side and do just the opposite. Come up from the bottom right, drag it in about halfway. I'm going to take the exposure down some and cool it off just a little bit and about right there that's just going to help the image pop and it actually looks like doing that i like what it did in the water and the sky and this peak here but kind of darken this a little bit too much so i'm going to pop another radial filter on there lighten mode drag it in 
about like that. Now the next step, I want to adjust my whites and my blacks to get a good exposure on the overall image. I like to do this last because if I do it in the earlier steps and then I start messing with dodging and burning, I can end up blowing out highlights and crushing blacks. So now I'm going to grab the white slider, hold down Alt, and slide it to the right. When those pixels start peeking through like that, that means I've gone too far. I'm going to back it off. And there we go, we got properly exposed highlights. Now we're going to do the same thing on the blacks. Hit the slider, press Alt, slide it to the left. Till we see those pixels peep through, then we're going to back it off. And there we go, you can tell by the histogram, we got a nicely exposed image. Nothing is crushed, nothing is blown out. The blues are peaking a little bit, but I did want a little bit of a cooler temperature image here. And if we look at the before and after, I'm going to hit this double Y icon here. It'll put them side by side. I'm going to hit tab. That'll hide the toolbars. Hit L twice to turn the lights out. And you can see what we've done. Big difference between the beginning and final image. This image on the right did a good job of bringing back those colors and contrast, the highlights and the shadows. Gave it a little bit of an artistic flair, but definitely didn't go overboard, which is how I like to edit. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the subscribe and like button. I'll be doing more of these tutorials in the future. Thanks for watching.